Oh yeah, like. Hello, my name is Teresita Blanco, the artist sister, and we're continuing with my Sweet Vampire Candid, a book written by me, Teresita Blanco. We're in, we're continuing with chapter two. Alright. Anya brought out a fishing hook and line, and then she went about mending Candice's shoulder. While she wore, Candice noticed the fisherman from before fishing out a shark. They then proceeded to plunge in the shark to death before throwing it back to the water. Candice frowned and said, what a bunch of jerks. They, didn't, they did not even eat the shark, so why did they kill it? Some folks just like to kill because it is so much fun, said Anya. She added, I went through a face like that myself, but it wore off quickly. Yes, I remember. It was a time when you were a vigilante, said Candice reminiscing. When Anya concluded this, she said, you know what? We should have aged your brother shark. Brother Shark, asked Candace, she added, It is not as if we need to make a big deal about every little creature that bites the dust. Yes, but don't you like sharks, asked Anya? Yes, they are mild enough, said Candace. Well, and like us, they don't hurt anyone without a reason, said Candace. You're to your scene, Grandma. You don't need my approval, said Candace, shrugging her shoulder. Candace did not feel like she had a right to judge her grandmother. Like her, they were, partic they were particular living creatures she could not tolerate, like roaches. Anya gave a bit of speed to her boat, and then she ran against the sailboat that was stuck. The strike scratched the hull of the sailboat, but it at least did what it had to. The sailboat sank and withered the sailor. By now, it was dusk, and the reef sharks had awakened. They had seen what the fishermen had done to their fellow hammerhead. That hammerhead was particularly loved in the alligator reef. He was both a poet and a good dancer. The second the fishermen landed in the water, the Richards had a field and nobody lived to tell the tale. Anya drove back home pretty satisfied with herself. She had done a bit of vigilante work and she felt that the world had become a little bit more righteous due to her work. Candy was still nursing her ouchie. Her shoulders stung and it made gripping items painful. It also did not help that every exposed piece of flesh was burned. Candy had used sunblock and everything, but it did not help at all. Chapter 4 The Bucky Dent. I thought it was. Uh, okay, we were in chapter 3. Now we're in chapter 4. The fable day came, and when Candace moved into her first apartment, when Candace moved into her first apartment with her grandmother and her father, the first major problem was getting the bed into the house. Regardless of how much they pushed into the stairs, the mid race could not make it to the second floor. Candace had settled for an apartment on the second floor. The ones on the second floor had two stories, with the bedrooms on the third floor. From that high up, high up, Candace got a good view of the non sunset and, and some trees as well. Candace was all about seeing the sunset. Anyhow, as for the bed in the end, they had to tie it to a rope and hoist it up the third floor. The furniture they had rented from Vasuski also required similar logistics. Marlo had to return the dining room and the living room as soon as Candace settled on something. Before the furniture had even entered, Anya had done a roach inspection. She had placed a roach killer coop and sealed it up and sealed up all of the holes she could find. Since it was a smaller space, Anya was able to roast through the apartment, a rare fit indeed. The apartment had a small kitchen and the air conditioner was nearby and on top of the water heater. Beyond the kitchen area, there was a green carpet. It went all the way out to the bedrooms. The walls themselves were painted yellow and green. This made the apartment look smarter and darker than it really was. This worked well for vampires. When Marlo and Nadia sorted the logistics of getting the stuff inside, Candace started looking about the, the neighborhood. She noticed a fellow who was painting facing a wall. Candace focused her eyes on the pretty picture and she noticed that the fellow was painting a light skip that only his eyes could see. Around the parking lot, there was a couple of baths rolling around the place. Mainly, there were a lot of cars parked. There were even some parked in front of the Savannah. There were even some parked in front of the Savannah apartment sign. Downstairs, Marlo was pitching a seat to get his parking space. It was common for residents to park in locations that did not belong to them. Candice smiled as she saw her father acting silly due to the parking situation. She then lowered the air conditioner a bit in order to help the room get cooler. The previous owner had left the air conditioner on and the apartment felt like a steam, like a steam room. Candice closed the blinds and she lay down on top of the queen bed. 
The ventilator was making a creaking, distracting sound. Candace got up on got up on the bed and she wiggled the ventilator a bit. It, Till it stopped making the sound. As soon as she got comfortable again, the stupid noise returned. Anya entered the room and then she said, Now that is annoying. If you need me, I'm going to sleep in the coffin room. So the apartment had two bedrooms. The second bedroom was filled with three snug coffins. The coffins were custom made to order. Anya's coffin came with a flat screen TV. When she closed it, she could watch her telenovelas. And when computers became better, she would replace the TV with a laptop. There was a computer in the coffee room as well, and it was placed inside the closet with a table and a chair within. Both the TV and the computer relied on the same Wi-Fi cable, so whoever had to use the internet had to take the cable from the television. There was also a TV in the living room against the wall that led downstairs. Since Candace did not want to delay the inevitable, the, fo the following night fall, she went with her father to get some furniture. They acquired a small dining room set with round glass table. The table looked small and metallic and chic. What it had in beauty, it lacked in utility. Most of the time, either Candace or Marlo were bumping their knees against the table. Eventually, Marlo gave up on the table and he started eating dinner on the club chair. The other furniture was, green, as, was a green Chesterfield sofa. The overall color, color skin combination was green and golden. It seemed easier to Candace to combine the furniture with the walls than to paint the entire apartment. Aside from the vampire stuff, Candy was working on making the balcony more comfortable for Cassandra. There was a pet store within walking distance near the public, and she had bought there some food and a bigger case of some toys for Cassandra. Cassandra was usually picky about her toys, so Candy had brought the bread in with her to the shop. Cassandra showed a little hexagonal ball that she could grab and jiggle it too. She got for herself some mini sneakers. Cause tearing, uh, tearing uh, apart shoes is fun. She also got a colorful new purse. Candace wanted to get more items, but there was not a lot of items that caught Cassandra's interest. Most of the items in the pet store focused on dog and cat toys. So and Cassandra said, I told you we should have packed my stuff as well, but no. Sorry, said Candace meekly. The days passed easily in Hialeah, and by now it was close to Christmas. During her wanderings, Anya, Anya had discovered the Buckingham Park. Candice liked the pool, so Anya too scared to check the hours. Candice made a note to fall asleep early to visit the pool in the morning. Her Spanish lessons were progressing torturously slow. Anya was thinking of getting Candice to school, but Marlo did not believe in education. Aside from last in some Latin in Spanish pronunciation lessons here and there, Candace was learning most of her Spanish from watching telenovelas. There was a particular one that she caught at 9 p.m. It was called a clone. It took place in both Morocco, Morocco and in Rio de Janeiro. Both places did not appear often in American fleet that, that Candace used to watch. She was slowly getting enamored with the idea of roaming in the desert and of visiting Rio. As with most of her usual fancies, they were short lived by the new by the new shiny thing. A clone was first, was Candy's first introduction to Brazilian telenovela. After watching a clone, Candy saw Sica da Silva. This was a bit harder to catch and see sometimes air at 4 a.m. or even 5 a.m. Manda knew Candy was trying to keep up with Sica, so he made an effort to record the episodes. When not catching telenovelas, Candice started to see the old telenovela tapes Anya had recorded over the years. She had piles and piles of them in the warehouses. She was ever increasing the acquisition of all ones she liked. And one that deeply disturbed her and made her afraid of the moon was Mujeres de Arena. There was a scene when Thorn Hall is asking the moon to take him away, and they have to tie him down to prevent the moon from stopping him up into the sky. Another fun one was called La Flor de Jorge Tadeo. The main scene focused on a flower that a woman ate it made Jorge Tadeo manifest, and he would show them a good time. For this reason, the flower was quite popular. As the tunnel over the unfold, you discover why the flower had such a power. Candace was also watching Uga Uga. It was a star that done in a Brazilian telenovela style. Instead of monkeys, ta Tattoo is raised by the indigenous folk and he is eventually found and brought back to civilization by his grandpa. 
Despite the city premier, it was quite watchable, watchable and a commentary on the plight of the indigenous population living in the Amazon, who are treated by the white population as less than human. With this choppy Spanish education, Candice was making slow, torturous process with, with, with learning the language. After catching Sika, Candice decided to go to bed early. She had the intention of visiting the local pool. The local pool. pool. The second she tried to close her eyes, the second she tried to close her eyes in bed, the alarm went off. Candice jumped out of the bed and looked out the window. Cassandra said to Candice, "Sonja pulled the fire alarm." Candice frowned and said, "What a bother!" Cassandra flew out to get away from the noise. As for Candice, she jumped into her coffin. She normally prefers sleeping on the bed. Her sleep tended to be a little too heavy when she slept in the coffin. She arranged the alarm to wake her up. To wake her up. Alarm for coffin vampire just made the lid open up. The sudden burst of thunder was usually enough to wake even the dead. The following morning came, came and this time the thing that I woke up Candy was a drilling. Now the Marlon no Anya were in the apartment. Marlon had gone to Rome about on his camper. As for Anya, she had left a note saying that she had gone to check up on her storage unit. Anya had seen in the news that some of the warehouses had been broken into. Candice got out of bed in a farm mood. She dressed quickly and then she went to the barking den. She, the front of the park had the entrance to the court. She paid $5 entrance fee and she was soon inside the park. She tried a couple of the slides and she even swam a few laps. By noon she was bored and hungry. In the bucket and the fellows looked at her weird. She was wearing short shorts and, and on top a long sleeve shirt. Candice ignored the fellows and she went about her business. Eventually she got into the game of volleyball with one of the younger kids. The kid asked Candice, are you new to school? No, nah, I don't go to school, said Candice. Why and how? My mom says I don't have a choice. If I don't go to school, they take me away to a foster home for being neglected, said the kid. Suck, don't it? But I think you have a homeschooling option or something, said Candice. Yes, but mom works all the time, said the kid sadly. I don't even do the homeschooling either. My, fa my dad doesn't believe in education, said Candice. She added, and my mom never bothered to send me to school. So you don't know how to read and write? asked the kid surprised. Are you like a Mormon or something? Nah, I'm a vampire, said Candice nonchalantly. Sure you are, said the kid laughing. In all seriously, if you don't get an education, you can't get a good job. I'm not worried about jobs. I have all my needs uh, I have all my needs are provided for, so I can do whatever I want. Which at the moment is to see lots of telenovelas, said Candice. Telenovelas, <laughs> said the kid. A month passed and the conversations continued. Eventually, the kid spoke to his mother about the Candice situation. The lady who was a well intentioned teacher appeared in Candice's apartment. Oh, yeah, the time? Yeah, you still got two minutes. The lady looked at Milo from head to toe and his visage made her skin crawl, but she stood her ground. The little meddler went on a tirade about what happens to students who refused to go to school and that they might end up in Jewish. She also illustrated how Marla could face criminal charges for denying her daughter education. Marla frowning said to her, I thank you for your concern for my daughter, but Candice is old enough to decide her life for herself. She has spent 60 years with just basic education and she never showed any inclination to learn anything else. And I was never the type of fellow to force her to do something she does not want to do. If you want Candice to get an education, you must convince her of the benefits that such a path will imply. As for me, I personally do not believe in education of any kind. When you have been alive as long as I have, you will realize the knowledge of mother is ephemeral and amorphous, and not worth investing any time and money. The conversation ended there, but the problem did not. Eventually, Annie was the one who had to defuse the situation. When the police came for Candice, Anya sneezed in their general direction. These things made them forget the reason they had come there in the first place. Anya then followed them home. At night, she hypnotically suggested that the kid's mother was crazy. With this forethought, the cousin not bother pressing the matter further. Further. Anya did not stop there. She made the kid and his mother forget all about Candice. Candice was sorry at the loss of her new acquaintance. But she got over it quickly because she was not much of a conversation because it was not much of a conversation at least. Alright, we'll continue later. Bye bye.